Hi, good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Brooke Anderson. And this week I got the chance on Tuesday to work with Dick and Valerie and we addressed the homeless um, population in Greeley. And um, we're just able to talk a lot about what God is calling us to do when um, serving the homeless here. And we actually got into a conversation about um, panhandling and a lot of us um, just expressed how skeptical we were of giving people money um, on the side of the road just because we didn't want to give money to people who wouldn't use it to, um, for good use. And something that Dick said that just really um, touched me and started, um, got me thinking was just that we aren't called to be skeptical of people. We're called to be generous. And we shouldn't be worried about where our money is going. If we're giving people $5 to, um, just to give that willingly and to really just share that with people. And if people choose to do it, to use it for something that um, just isn't necessarily the right thing that we don't think our money should go to, then we shouldn't be worrying about that. Um, and something that I just set a goal this week after Dick said that, that every time I would see a homeless person or someone panhandling, that I would just willingly give my money this week. And that doesn't mean that every week I'm going to give um, money to every homeless person I see, but just to really set um, my heart in the right direction and to really learn to just share with people and not worry about what I'm doing or where I'm putting my money in just giving it willingly. So yeah. Good morning. Um, I'm Lisa Shutters and I'm going to talk about um, painting ad. Sorry. Painting at the Genesis house. Um, some of those pictures at the end did not even begin to show how small how small this apartment was that we were painting. Um, I'm pretty short and I could touch the ceiling without being on my tiptoes. <laughs> and it was in pretty bad shape. The walls were peeling, like not just the paint, but the whole plaster, I guess you would call it. <laughs> there was just holes everywhere and none of the windows opened. We were in the basement. We only had the door that was able to give us some air. and. You know, <laughs> there was five of us in there. Um, so there was so much more that we wanted to do to help these people. Um, I did not know how to repair a wall, <laughs> but we decided we were just going to put as much love into this as we could. I'm sorry, I'm really shaky. <laughs> um, on the walls, they had command strips that had been painted over on the wall. We couldn't take those down for more than one reason. They were painted over, of course, but if we could have pulled that down, probably the wall would have come with it. Um, in one section, there was cardboard that was stuck to the wall. I think it was probably the repair job for the wall. <laughs> um, we tried picking at that a little bit, but decided that probably was not a good idea, so we painted over the cardboard. <laughs> and it was just, hard to see that this place was in such bad shape. It was an old house, probably over 100 years old. It was kind of down by the Meeker Museum, so it was in that area. And it was just in really bad shape. And the kids, they just kept saying, whoever painted before us, they were just in a hurry to get out of here. And so that made them really just want to do a better job for them. And it looked pretty good when we were done. <laughs> and when we came in, there was footprints on the floor from whoever had painted <laughs> before us. And that really bothers me to have paint on the floor. <laughs> so Brooke and I worked and scrubbed at that paint and we got all the paint off of the floor. So we felt pretty good about that. It looked way better, <laughs> way better than when we first came in. But I think our kids put a lot of love into this little basement apartment in Greeley, so I feel that they really did leave his mark. Thank you.
morning, I'm Teresa Spinagle, and you got to be careful what you text to Mike, because he'll ask you to come up here and tell you. <laughs> um, this was an interesting missions trip um, because it touched more than the youth of our church. It touched families like mine, and it touched families of elderly folks who go to this church, who go to this church, and might not know the youth. And so, for me, it was an awesome chance to show how the body of Christ can come together when there are needs in the congregation. The hard thing is getting people to admit they have needs. And I think sometimes we're so used to solving our own problems or paying somebody to do it that we don't recognize that we have something that the kids could help us with or that groups can help us with. So this project was for Vern and Zelma Packard some of you may know them, and they had a huge willow tree that um, was starting to be unsafe in their neighborhood, and it was on a corner. We had to find out from the city that yes, we could cut down a tree if we weren't charging money for it without a license, as long as we kept it out of the street, because it was on their private property, but it was on a corner. And God put together my son-in-law, who used to cut trees for a living as he went through college, he put together Richard Martin, who had a man lift that he let us borrow. He put together the rest of my older kids and my husband, who cut down the tree on Sunday, and we took about six hours to do that. And then the youth came on Tuesday. In between there, Zelma was out picking up sticks every time she had a chance, and um, we tried to tell her to wait for the kids because they'll do the job. But anyway, um, God just put together that team. The kids came. They had it all cleaned up in a couple hours. He put together trailers for us to use. And, and we need to remember that God, God can put, he put us in this family. And the needs that we have can be met. We just have to be willing to share them and to let, let them know. But because the youth um, didn't go somewhere else, we were able to see this this year, and that was a huge blessing. Hello, my name is Abby. <laughs> I'm going to be a junior this year, and so this was like my fifth mission trip, I think. And it was definitely a lot different than other ones, but I think this one we were able to impact more people here because it's hard for people to believe that we're able to do this much work when we're gone, and so for them to see it here, and us doing it, it really helps them. I had the opportunity to help homeless people this week, and I talked with a guy named Bill, and Bill had lost his wife about five years ago from cancer, and so he was homeless because he had to pay for all the medical bills for his wife, and so I was able to talk to him, and he was just such a happy person, and he didn't let anything get down to him, and it just showed me that even though if you're homeless and stuff, they're still as equal as us, and they're loved as much as God loves us. Thanks. My name is Bray, and this is my third mission trip, and as you can tell, I'm kind of nervous. When we first started, when I first heard that our trip to South Dakota was cancer, canceled sorry we were all pretty disappointed I thought the alternative would not be the same it may not have but we made it work God t says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 for I know the plans that I have for you plans to well for you and not harm you to give you hope in a future during the night heights or worship on the alternative, we talked about Romans 12, 1 and through 2, where the Apostle Paul talks about offering our bodies as living, living sacrifices as our spiritual act of worship and how we should not be confirmed to the world, but let ourselves be transformed by the renewal of our mind. And in our devotions, we talked about Joseph in Genesis 20, 37 and the 39 through 41. 
Joseph went from favorite child to hold to slavery, to head of household, to throne in prison, then head of the prison, and then forgotten about. But Joseph, uh, no, but God used uh, those uh, times to, to put Joseph where he needed to be and turn him into the person he was meant to be. This fulfills the promise that the Apostle Paul talks about in Romans 8.28. And I know that those who love, the, who love God, all things work together for the good for those who are called according to, the, to his purpose. And in Proverbs 3.5 states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. It's not always easy to trust God, but he does fulfill his promises. And I do trust uh, that everything we're going through right now, he will work them all out for the good. Like in Philippians uh, 4 through 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you. Um, hi, my name's Ruthie. For those who don't m know me, I graduated this year, and so I had the opportunity to um, be a part of the youth group for one last time as um, I went on this last trip. And so um, this year, of course, was a lot more different than we had anticipated, but I can tell you that um, the Surf Greeley opportunity was just as impactful and just as influential and fu um, fulfilling in my life as it has always been. Um, Mike already mentioned it, but I just wanted to say thank you to um, this church family. I have um, always grown up in this church, and so I just want to thank you for um, the prayers that um, people um, gave as um, we went on these trips the past um, years, and so for anyone who prayed for our group as a whole or who were prayer partners, for certain people who gave us projects to do for us to raise money, I just want to um, say thank you. So 